It is Monday, April 17th, and this is your Morning Mud. This episode is brought to you by Mudwater. Mudwater is a coffee alternative, as well as the most aptly named sponsor for this show ever, with one-seventh of the caffeine as a regular cup of coffee. It's made with masala chai, cacao, mushrooms, turmeric, sea salt, cinnamon, and that is it. And I know what you're thinking, Matt. You are somebody who loves caffeine. Why would you be hawking for a company that is advertising less caffeine? And that's because it works. It's true. I love caffeine. I used to drink two energy drinks a day, and now I might have one a week. All thanks to Mudwater. If you or someone you love might want to make the switch to Mudwater, all you have to do is head on over to muddiedwatersoffreedom.com slash mud to make the switch today. Good morning, everyone. I am Matt Wright, Editor-in-Chief of Muddied Waters Media. I hope you had a fantastic weekend, kicking the week off right. Uh, for all of you who got a chance to listen to the subscriber episode because I forgot to click subscriber on it, you're welcome, and I'm sorry it wasn't a good episode, but I was on painkillers, and yeah. Anyway, um... So, let's get into it. Uh, as we know, over the weekend, Jack Teixeira, who is a Air, U.S. Air Force uh, National Guardsman, Air National Guard, um, was arrested for leaking the Pentagon Papers. Um, there are a lot of questions in this story. Like, one... How crappy is the Pentagon's security that a 21-year-old was able to access these documents? Even if he was, you know, working with the teams that do that, I don't think he had the security clearance to be seeing the things that he was posting. Um, also, uh, okay, so let, let's assume that Jack Teixeira did have the security clearance to do this. What we know is he had the security clearance to do this. If he had the security clearance to do this, he then used that security clearance in order to try to gain clout with other members of his Discord, uh, on a, other members on his Discord server uh, to prove that he was a very important individual in the, mili in the military industrial complex. Uh, that he had a lot of power and he was using it in order to gain notoriety am amongst a bunch of s kids that were 17. Which, if you have that security clearance, you know you're not supposed to do that. And you would know better than to do that. And you probably know the outcome of what is going to happen should you do that. So you probably aren't going to do that. The other thing that kind of comes up is with the leaks, a lot of the stuff that came out is stuff that, you know, everybody already knows. Like one of the things that I actually talked about this on the episode that didn't record audio last week, but uh, they, they were like some of the, some of the biggest uh, leaks were that we were spying on Egypt and South Korea. Now, anybody knows, any, any major government knows that uh, we, are, we are spying on them. They are spying on us. It is just the way it is. It's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. We are, we are all spying on each other. So that's really not that big of, that's really not that big of a leak. Now, there is a theory that maybe, perhaps, Jack Teixeira started out doing this because from what I have read, you know, the, the media is trying to paint Jack Teixeira as though he is 
a you know right wing white nationalist gun nut and what it sounds like to me is that he was a lonely kind of kid that was just looking for online notoriety in his own little bubble of people uh so what what the theory goes and i'm not saying that i'm a hundred percent on with this theory but um he started posting this stuff to this discord server and then it took months for this stuff to come out he was posting it he wasn't getting enough likes and reactions uh and comments to the stuff he was posting so he was saying guys i'm just going to stop posting if you don't react more if you don't if if, if you don't engage with this more i'm just going to stop posting this stuff um I think that at the beginning, he figured out a way to get away with it once or twice. I think that the, I think there is a chance that the military and that the government knew he had done this. And they kind of realized that he would do this. He would continue pushing out stuff uh, to try to gain notoriety in this group and that eventually the stuff that he was posting would get leaked out to everybody else. And the stuff that he posted initially weren't things that kind of mattered, like it, the number of uh, Ukrainian soldiers dead versus number of Russian soldiers that were dead, uh, things like that. Um, but then it started leaking other things like about about Ukraine uh, not going to have the ammo, not going to have the munitions to last them through the month, and uh, how they aren't sure if their spring counteroffensive through Crimea would be able to happen, um, and how we were spying on Egypt, and Egypt is planning on giving weapons to Russia through backdoor channels. Almost everything that was leaked sort of benefits the United States and their in their uh and their operations operational goals for a lot of different things going on in Ukraine right now. So what if he did it once, twice, and they realized that this is how that they could get it to come out? they could start getting a nice drip campaign going on through him that would eventually get leaked to the press. Then Jack Kirby could sit up there and be like, the the press shouldn't be showing these things. Nobody should be looking at these things. Uh, they weren't meant for anybody to see. And that's going to make people go out, seek them out, look for them. And then Russia goes, oh, look, they're planning a, a counteroffensive through Crimea. So they load up a bunch of people in Crimea, Crimea and then instead they come around uh, the, the uh, Donetsk region and do the counteroffensive coming up around the back, sort of like what we did in D-Day, where all the Germans thought we were going somewhere else. There is a chance that this kid... I mean, he broke he broke the law uh, because he was trying to gain notoriety online. I, I believe that 100%. I believe that there is a good chance that he got caught doing this. He wasn't told he was caught doing this. And then he was used unwittingly as somebody who would release the information to the public in hopes that it would push people into, okay, we need to fund Ukraine more because they don't have enough munitions to make it through this amount of time. Okay, Egypt, we already know we're spying on each other. We want you to know that we heard that you said you were going to be giving weapons to Russia and you don't want to do that because we give you like $2 billion every year and that will go away. Um, and if we can get convince Russia that we are going to be coming up through Crimea as opposed to uh, coming in through the uh, Dan Basque region, then we're, we'll be fine. We can convince Russia to go one way as opposed to the other way. There is a chance that once he did it and they found out, he became the patsy that they were looking for in order to get this information out. 
and he will pay the price for it. But if you take a look at everything that was leaked, all of it benefits the goals of the United States. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Welcome back, everybody. I appreciate you sticking with me through the break. It's been a while since we've um, done what I'm about to do here. And uh, this used to be kind of a staple of the show, but uh, since we've retooled a bunch of stuff, um, we haven't done this segment in a while, but that brings us back. And now we have the brand new installment of Deep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. Now, as we all know, our wonderful, brilliant, unsurpassed vice president uh, is the most adept speaker in the world. She makes me look like I'm the Toastmaster General. Um, and that's just kind of sad for being one heartbeat away from the president. Um, but over the last few days, she has said a number of things that I believed were worthy of me making fun of her. So let us start out with the first Deep Thought by Kamala Harris. These so-called leaders dare to tell us they are fighting for our freedoms. Don't you find that interesting? Some have gone so far as to name and brand their agenda the, quote, freedom blueprint. Don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for the okie doke. I believe what she was really reaching for and hoping to grasp on, and you know that she went off the book because the term is rope dope. Don't fall for the rope dope. And her code switching that, that she did there at the end um, to really sell the don't fall for the okie doke. She is unmatched in that the only the only person that comes in in close second. A close second is Hillary Clinton. Um, now, in there, she said the leaders that are trying to say that they are coming up with the freedom blueprint. Well, that's coming from the woman. And I'm not saying that the leaders that she is lambasting here are actually coming up with something that is a freedom blueprint. Don't get me wrong. But the Inflation Reduction Act did nothing to reduce inflation. The Affordable Health Care Act did nothing to make health care more affordable. The Patriot Act was not patriotic. So I agree that something called the Freedom Blueprint is actually quite terrifying. It is actually quite terrifying, but uh, she should not be the one to try to call that out or point that out to anybody. And she should know, okie doke means okay, and rope dope means I'm trying to trick you with this while I'm going to hit you with this one. Um, let's get to Kamala number two. Because you voted in 2020 and we now have a Department of Justice that actually believes in the pursuit of justice. And at what, at what point, Kamala, 
did the Department of Justice not believe in your version of justice? Um, during the Trump administration, the Department of Justice was not going after anything that would have been considered justice. The Department of Justice is there for one reason and one reason only, and that is to ensure that the big power hungry individuals at the top remain in charge and anybody who is threatening that will be punished. The Department of Justice has not changed. They just got a little bit less red tape to go after the people they want to under the administration that you are currently sitting in. Let's hit Kamala number three. And I want to make another point. You know, in traveling around the world, I often, in fact, almost every time when I go to a new country, I'll, I'll meet with women to talk with them about how they're doing. That one was so stupid, we have to hear it again. And I want to make another point. You know, in traveling around the world, I often, in fact, almost every time when I go to a new country, I'll, I'll meet with women to talk with them about how they're doing. Almost every time she goes to a different country, she meets with women. Almost every time she meets with women. Are there countries out there that don't have women? How is... Are there countries where she's not allowed to meet the women that are there? Does she just not see them? What is... How? How are you not meeting with women every time you go to a different country to see how they're doing? The fact of the matter is she is the world's most untalented politician. Um, she never really knows what she's saying when she's saying it. And she just goes out there and begins speaking and hopes that whatever comes out makes the slightest, a bit, slightest amount of sense and hopes that the media will never call her on it, which they never, ever will. Uh, but she made it to the second most powerful position in America based on these traits and qualities while polling at like 1% in the DNC uh, primaries. So... Way to go, people. This is who we got. We are living in idiocracy. And 2024 is only looking better. That is the episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you enjoy what is happening here at Muddied Waters Media, I ask you to do a couple of simple favors for us. Please, whatever podcasting platform you are listening to us on, give us a five-star review. Also, leave a review. And the biggest way that you can help is by sharing this episode with your friends. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We will see you again very soon. And remember, where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs>